Welcome to our home. No, no. <laughs> Is it the video? Uh, it's just YouTube. Good job. Even better. That's going to be exactly this. You guys need to tell it. Is it? Bonjour, dear friends. Welcome to JCB Live. We're starting again, in case you heard me. You're going to hear me twice. This is happy hour tonight, and we're going to be interviewing one of the most charming, irresistible, iconic lady winemaker of all time. But unfortunately, she had a little problem in the vineyards, right? So I decided to invite her most irresistible creatures that we actually had I had a little bit to do with, as you could tell. And this is? So what do we say to all our guests? Welcome to our home. So we are on Wapo Hill, dear friends, one of the most telluric, exciting, and of course, lively place on earth. This is where we live. This is where the ladies are being raised. Although you are French and American a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Are you both? Parlez-vous français? Oui. Do you taste wine every day? No. Almost. What do you like the most, Chardonnay or Pinot Noir? Or Char both? Chardonnay. And what about you? Chardonnay. Chardonnay as well. They're very big in the Chardonnay from Gina, which is very exciting to see. They already love what their mother is producing. So do you think we should... Let me talk a little bit about your mother, and you correct me, okay? So tonight... Gina, my irresistible wife, will be with us for a happy hour. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about her childhood, her personality, her inspiration, her passions, what drives her, what excites her, what are her dreams, and more importantly, what makes her who she is today. I cannot wait for you to meet her because not only she's exceptional professionally, but isn't she the best mother of all time? Yes. She's the best wife, partner, best friends of all time. And the most fun we have is blending wine together, right? Yes. So what do we do together? We play tennis at the tennis courts. We go in the pool. We paint a little bit. We paint. And what else do we do? We make jewelry. So dear friends, as Gina is going to be coming because she's just back from the vineyards, we created this piece, and maybe Dylan, you want to get very close because I want everybody to see it. Why don't you ladies describe what you've designed with me? Because this is really a cool thing you've done. Well, I um, did the rainbow and the colors are white. Light pink, emerald green, yellow, and red. Aha! Uh -huh. And you did the rainbow going which way to the colors? Down. Lightest to darkest? So, so. Yeah. And then you have a grape hanging? Yes. And Honoré, tell us about the hearts. So I did the heart for love, and I did it red because it's the color of the rose and mm. and that's my favorite flower the rose why because it just looks so nice aha uh -huh. well do you want to smell something that smells like rose yes it's a very new wine dear friends and it's going to attract gina to come and join us in a moment dear friends we are releasing a new wine which is vivid Precocious, and from the name, shameless. This is the fantastic JCB. Woo! French kiss! So, ladies, I want you to describe before Mama arrives the wine. So, this is for you, Honoré Joséphine, and this is for you, Grace Antoinette. Dear friends, the first moment we opening French kiss just arrived in the United States last week. So describe the nose. You cannot taste it, but you can describe the nose, flower, vegetable, fruit, or candy you choose, or all of them. So for the vegetable, it smells like a little bit like carrots. And for the flower, 
Ooh, carrots, I like that. Is it smelling the flower you were describing earlier? Yes, rose. Ooh. And what else? Any candy that you can think of that you love so much? Candy is part of the descriptive of wine. It kind of smells like sour candy. Mm. And it smells very tart. Very cool. What about you, Grace Antoinette? For In the, French, maybe? For the vegetable, um, it tastes like tomatoes. But okay. it's also fruit. Okay. And for the fruit, it tastes like peaches. Yes. Pretty cool. And What for else? And candy, I think it smells like sweetest fish. Which one? Sweetest fish. That's something you may know what it is. I'm still learning on the candy family. So what is that? It's a type of gummy that is it's red fish. Yeah, it's a it's shaped as a fish and it's red and it's sweet. So do you think your mother is going to like this wine? Yes. yes. So why don't we invite her? Ladies and gentlemen, we delighted to welcome my irresistible, passionate, gorgeous wife, Gina. Okay, ladies, Guess you can what sit. I found. A little cork. Here she is. So, Gina, the ladies are welcoming you with the first French kiss. Tell us about your first French kiss ever in your life. Because as we have the wine, we're going to know did you really have a real French kiss ever? I had one real one from you, and you were my first. Ooh. I was scared of the French. You were. Till I met you. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, it's always something about the French. What is about the French? There's always a preconceived ideas about the French because they love life. They have energy to bring people together. But is the wine representing this French kiss? I'm shaking, dear friends, because the most amazing palate in the world is appreciating the wine that I've never shown her before. I guess I would say French it kiss. represents my last French kiss and my forever last kiss, which will be with my love. Thank kiss. you, my love. I might have had one before. Ooh. Quote unquote French kiss. But it's totally okay. Who is to say that she couldn't live before she met me? But together, dear friends, we created those amazing, irresistible beauties, and we delighted to be together as a family. So tonight, Gina, very unusual. I'm the one who is asking you a few questions. Ooh, I, la, 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 la. Do you girls want to stay or do you want to go play? Maybe you stay for the first one. Yes. Okay. I think the first question is important. So, Gina, yes. you know, you had an incredible career, an amazing personal and professional life. What makes you, you think, who you are today? Mm -hmm. Well, what makes me who I am today, I'd have to go back to my beginnings. And for me, it's definitely my parents. My mother and father made me who I am today. Um, their inspiration, their uh, tenacity, the way they were. We grew up on a ranch, you have to realize. It was a vineyard, yes, but we had different animals. And that being said, we were very fortunate. We had my grandfather, Julio, and great Eileen, as well as uh, my mother's uh, parents, who we called Nanny and Judge, because he was a judge. And so if my parents were there, my grandparents were there. So my first, who made me who I was, was that. And then I would say definitely moving on. Then my parents had eight children. So that's seven siblings. My brothers, my sisters. And I think for me, when I found my career, four brothers, and I came after all of them. And my sisters were really strong and supportive too. But having four brothers, when you realize I fell in love with wine, wine making, and it was really a man's world when I started. So I would say my siblings, by far, my parents, my grandparents, they really gave me the roots. Also our cousins, because we all lived in Modesto, and um, we spent a lot of time with family and friends. That's quite a deep family root explanation. The winery started in 1934, 33. When did you have wine for the first time? Well, we had wine probably about this age, um, a little bit of water and I was in the wine yes because it's I like a sacrilege pink. we never did that I in like my pink. family I like pink I like pink 
So you mixed it, and at the family table, you enjoyed wine? Yes, and I kind of always wanted a little bit more, so when you add a little water, you have a little bit more of the wine, so yes. But you're an amazing chef. How did you become such a great chef? Because I believe you became a great chef even before becoming such a great winemaker. Well, in our family, the meal was so important. I mean, sorry, it was my grandparents as well, but my parents. I mean, we made wine, we grew up with wine, but wine was just an additive to the table. What was most important is the people around the table. Yes. And then also the food, and hot, nice, good food, fresh from the garden. So I, I fell in love with food. My father and my brothers taught me how to barbecue. I love grilling. I love to do... And she's things. the best griller there is. I know about that. If you're ever in the neighborhood, you call us. There's always something on the grill. Fish, meat, sausage, and you love the... I love the, the flow there. You taught me that one, the rotisserie. And la pan. And la pan. And the rabbit, of course. Yes. Well, that came with the old grocery, you know, with such an emblem. We had to bring the rabbit in our, in our plate. But the history of it, our Italian side really was, um, you know, homemade pastas, lasagna, gnocchi, and all the kids were in the kitchen cooking, just as the girls do pretty much today, even though life is crazy and we're a little busier. So I loved it. I learned how to chop onions for the first time from my grandmother. Uh, I learned how to do gnocchi off the fork, which I thought was so fun, because it was like, oh, this is kind of like Play-Doh. You kind of play with it. You know, so it was, it was part of the family and made it very enjoyable. And then you sat down and you enjoyed everyone around the table. So I have fond memories of growing up. I have fond memories of food is very important, but most important is the people. And that's why I do that food. Brings people together. Well, very inspirational. And many people today, after the wonderful time we've lived over the last three months of being closer together as families at least, uh, I would like Gina to explain, because you're such an inspiration in the world of wine, but in general, for ladies in the professional world as well as for your path, how did you know you wanted to make wine? And how did you get into the professional side of it? It's a long story, but I'll keep it very short. I had a profession, or I had my degree on business and psychology. And then after that, I wanted to be part of our family winery, and I worked in sales. I think it's a great place to start for individuals, is to learn not only your customers, but your retailers, your restaurateurs. And once I was doing that, I realized, I want to learn more about the wine side. I want to learn more how to create it. So at that time, I was in sales for probably about a year, and I asked my general manager, may I go to UC Davis? I want to take the extension courses. And That's I did. Cool. I sat through two, two classes. Okay, bye ladies. They're going to go play. Well, you'll be back to say goodbye, I hope. Two classes, and it was with Ann Noble, Dr. Ann Noble and Dr. Linda Besson. And it was on, one was basic wine one, the science, and that was Linda Besson and Dr. Linda Besson. And the other was the sensory of wine, which was Ann Noble. And that extremely intrigued me. And we sat around the table. We didn't do this. Now I do this with my water, which I shouldn't do. But, um, you know, wine was just, like I say, an additive to the dinner. So that being said, I didn't realize, like the girls already know at this young age, you have raspberries, you have roses, you have all these flavors, but it comes from a grape. And I think that's so fascinating. And that's why wine, of all the beverages, is such a great one to pair with food, because it really adapts it. Other things can as well, too, but wine definitely does. So that's how I fell in love. And then the science was great, because I'm not, I never was the A student in math or science. And I knew I needed the basics. So I needed to have that fundamental basics of that. And with the dichotomy of it's science, but it is art, and you can really create. And then I learned that I love to cook. And you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And you really create what you want. And how would you advise for people to get into the world of wine if they have another profession, not professionally, but to start to enjoy wine? Would you recommend to people to cook? with wine, to come home and open a bottle of wine, and to dive in the world of wine that way by discovering one bottle every day. What's your advice? I think it's a journey. It's definitely a journey, and especially right now, everyone, it's very enjoyable to cook with wine, taste the wine. Um, and once you fall in love with it, and food in general, which everybody loves food, all of us do, it's a great pairing for that. So it's just, um, I mean, for individuals to go into wine, is that the question? Or mm -hmm. for someone just to No, no, to discover it. wine at home. Just uh, for would, people who just want to learn more. I would definitely, I love, and I still do it today, um, find a great wine steward in your retail shop and ask them questions. 
ask friends and just explore. I, I stick to, like when I was learning about Pinot Gris, I went to, Al well, I didn't get to go to Alsace, unfortunately, but I read books on the food and what was happening in Alsace, and we started creating the Pinot Gris, and I feel that tie for food was very helpful for me because the history of what happened in Alsace and their food and how they created Pinot Gris really got me that courage and the um, tenacity to really want to know more. Yes. And I fell in love with it because it's a natural pairing for that culture and for that region. So definitely food and wine goes well together. And so, I think reading and traveling, but right now we're not traveling. If you have an ambassador close to you, call them because they're the best to curate your personal choice in wine. So, Gina, tell you about nice. food. I think you have an amazing story with this great wine that I pre-poured for you. And dear friends, we're going to be trying the famous ENJ Gallo Estate Chardonnay. So, Gina, you were commenting on food, cooking. I know you have a great story on this one. This is, dear friends, my favorite Chardonnay made in the state of California. And I... And they don't break. <laughs> and you can hear I'm, we are blessed by the Pope who is listening to us. This is one of my favorite wines. Explain her well, how you make it and the start of it. This is very sentimental to me because it's the first wine when our family really, my grandfather Julio, my great uncle Ernest, really felt that Sonoma County really can create some amazing wines. Very diverse landscape, terrain and everything. So this actually wine, we left Napa now and we went over the uh, Mayacamas and we're in Russian River Valley. That being said, why it's sentimental to me is my grandfather was definitely the farmer, shoes in the dirt. My great uncle Ernest, he really enjoyed wanting to figure out what was going on in the market and discovered the taste of, you know, we're talking back in 1933, 40s, 50s, 60s. So that being said, my grandfather learned everything because they didn't have the opportunity to go away to college. Great high school education, but my grandfather learned everything from his garden, his vegetable garden, his fruit trees, um, everything that he brought to the table. He wanted it fresh, he wanted it organic, he wanted it at the table. And with this, this particular vineyard was Gravenstein apples. And it gave him the confidence. He would pick these apples. He didn't even own the vineyard at the time. We do now, but I don't know if he was poaching or not poaching, or actually it was friends because it was the fry winery, the, fr the family there. He would take those apples home, down to Modesto in the Central Valley where we grew up, and my grandmother would make apple pie. And that apple pie was crisp, tart, honey, nutmeg, cinnamon, but it wasn't sweet, it wasn't cloying. And my grandfather always believed to have, um, not that he didn't want the sugary, he wanted it to be bright and he wanted it to be expressive and pure of the Chardonnay. No oak in those days. So that gave him the confidence to say, I think this is a perfect vineyard to purchase. Now today, for myself, our estate, which has my grandfather, Julia, my great uncle Ernest on it, I always keep it at the top and I love it. Now though, we do put oak. It actually can handle 100% new oak because it adds with that nutmeg and spice. We use French, of course, my love. It's about because time. The French I love the American too. oak too. I love all the other oaks, but French oak with Chardonnay and with this particular type, it has nice acidity. It just blends it all in. So that's, that's the wonderful story I have. It's very sentimental to me. And for me today, um, it will always be the top Chardonnay that we have in our portfolio. Yeah, very impressive. And I need to tell you, 2003, Gina and I had a kiss at the edge of this vineyard. Little secret that I need to share. We were buying the Lodge vineyards, and Gina owns and her family the adjacent vineyards, Laguna. And we are next to one another. So I played a trick. What was my trick to get a kiss from you? Oh boy, we've got to get into wine and personal things, but this is really personal. We were at John Ash. No, not John Ash. We were at. Uh, yes, it was. It was John Ash, yeah, because of the place there, the hotel. But we didn't go to the hotel, thank God. He put my shoe in the tree. And I, I said, went to the only find way. I my shoe under the table. And he's like, I said, what happened to my shoe? Well, we got to find it. She was getting comfortable, so I had to put the shoe to get something. But that was the beginning of our wonderful relationship in Sonoma. And we thought tonight would be very exciting and inviting for all of you to really discover what Gina makes here, because honestly, this is in the vein of the best Côte de Bonne. You are in the Meursault, Chassin, Puligny, 
Corton Charlemagne, you go to the, to the Mont Rocher style. And this wine, very fortunately, Gina served it at our wedding and it created an unbelievable taste for all the people who came from Europe. And this is really the perfect boundary between the two worlds. So, Gina, you've contributed a lot in your business, in your personal life, but how do you contribute, you think, best today professionally in the world of wine? In the world of wine or outside of wine? Both. Tell us everything. I think in the world of wine, what I believe in, and you were asking, you know, how, who made me who I was, I didn't have a chance to talk, step on that whole topic, but um, I did a little bit. Family definitely was first and foremost, but then it was um, mentors. I think mentors are key. For me, I was kind of the next, not quite the next generation, but we had Zelma Long, we had Margaret, Margaret Davenport, um, who really were the first pioneers of women winemakers that went through UC Davis. So for me, when I walked in, it still was a man's world. And having them, Zelma was a huge mentor to me. And that, I think, was very key to have that connection. Yeah. And so for myself, you can be a mentor or you can be mentored. I still feel I want to be mentored. But at the same time, I love to mentor. So I think being that mentorship, that's how I can contribute back. Because now, I think it's been 35 years <laughs> and making wine. Um, so I think always that giving back in the mentorship, that's a great thing for our profession, for the winemaking and for the world of wine. Um, on the other level, what could I do? I mean, I love, um, I'm a believer in, I have, I'm fortunate to be on the board of Feed the Hungry, which is Tasty NFL, and it's all about fighting hunger. Obviously, you can tell I love the table, I love food, but that is the key for families to be able to be at that table, for young children especially. I mean, you know, all of you know the percentages of what's happening with hunger in the world. So if we can make a little dent out of that, I love that, and so I love that board and being a yeah. part of that. Um, the other one, because it meant so much in my life. And the taste of the NFL and all what you've been doing as a family as well to help alleviate you know, the issues of hunger with all the food banks and Which the sad the thing is, we're not, a, we're not living it. We're, we're, we're keeping it kind of here, but it's still rising. Yeah. But children especially, because how do you have, to be able to think in your brain and all of that, it's nourishment. I mean, when New York City has a closed day because of snow, those kids go hungry. It's kind of crazy. When you look at the numbers, it's really disturbing. So the more people that help, I think we can make a difference. That being said, also, then it comes to the ground again. It's yes. um, the land. What? The land. Which is? Which well, other board? Farmland Trust. Yes, the Farmland Trust. I love the Farmland Trust. So beyond my professional world, that, the Farmland Trust, I really love. Because again, kind of taunting numbers, 2,000 acres in the United States goes out and we lose food. So I think that's a really, and it's really family farmers. And the average family farmer, it's about 200 acres. So I mean, you're talking probably 10 families a day that are losing their farms. So how can we help? How can we help to support that? And we know California definitely has amazing food. We know the rest of the United States has beautiful food. So how do we keep that in the ground? So I work with an amazing board that I love and it's inspiring. And I go there and it's in Washington, D.C. and learn things or go to little farms or you go to Ohio, huge farms. And you come back and it opens your mind to, hey, maybe how I want to create wine or how, what are the things we should be doing to add back to um, the communities? That's right. So talking about community, yes. let's have our next wine. All right, what's our next one? Pinot because Noir. Because the Pinot Noir you love so much. So a little story when we first dated, Gina and I, the first time. I arrived in her beautiful place in Sonoma, and there's 14 bottles of wine open. All Pinot Noir. I get intimidated. Am I the first one? Typically giving 15 minutes to the person who has organized the party as politeness, but I got in and it was 7.20. And I asked Gina, all those great bottles of wine, what are we gonna do with that? How many guests are coming? And she says, it's only you and I, and we're gonna go through and analyze the wine. Gina was in love with Pinot Noir, as she is today, and she really, which I admired, did never hesitate to open those bottles and to taste, to compare, contrast, and learn from the old world to the new world. So she's become, I can vouch for that, coming from Pinot Noir country, a, an expert in Pinot. So you're making this amazing Pinot. 
surprisingly, not exactly in the Russian River. No. So for this Pinot, we went to one of our... This is, so the next two wines we're having is the Gallo Signature Series. And with the Gallo Signature Series, it has my signature on it. I love it. So it's from dirt to bottle to table. Very much care. And it's all about estate-grown fruit. So how we believe in sustainability. With this particular one, I love the Russian River. We have an estate in the Russian River that has off actually the Laguna Vineyard. But this one comes from San Lucia. And it's from our Olson Vineyard and also Sleepy Hollow. 100% Pinot Noir, which I don't know how you could not do 100% Pinot Noir. But um, Pinot is interesting. Winemakers, you know, we all feel, oh, it could be a little finicky, it's a little hard. But if you do your homework and figure out the land and the dirt, that Pinot will it it just go it explodes and it pops in your mouth. I think for myself again, learning from history, even before I met Jean Charles, I fell in love with Latache. I fell in love with some serious Burgundies. I didn't have, I couldn't, you know, buy many of them, but I just knew we could do it. And I was with my brother Matt and Kathleen, his lovely wife, and we tasted one at a restaurant once. And I said, Why can't we do this? I think we can do it. And the reason I said that shockingly was because my grandfather Julio. He didn't want anything to do with Pinot Noir. My father, nothing to do with Pinot Noir. Because California in those days, in the 60s, 70s, 80s even, there wasn't many great Pinot Noirs. So that opened my mind and put me on a discovery of, I think we can do it. And Marcello Monticelli, a great mentor of mine, he really believes that when you find that dirt, and my father as well, you can do anything. And this Pinot, which is exciting, it actually is on limestone, which in California, there's not a lot of limestone. And when you look at Burgundy, it's a wall of limestone. It's a bed of limestone. And that's what makes the Pinot so great there. So there's just little treasures, little nuggets in California that can do this extremely well. So that's the little Pinot. Is she passionate? Does she love Pinot? So yes, Kristen Cook asked, where do I find those wines? Oakville Grocery, of course, is doing a, an unbelievable offering of the signature series that Gina is crafting, sculpting. And I could tell you, loving those wines because the samples typically come to the house, we taste together, and she goes through endless hours of blending and crafting those wines. Unbelievable stuff. So Gina, if we were in the old world, what would you compare this phenomenal area to in Burgundy? Which wine does it make you think of the most? It gives me all the flavors of which I love and I adore is the Clos Oh, You're wow. You're shooting high, I'm maybe. Absolutely, I've got to. We're in America. So we, <laughs> we are living at the Club Rougeau, at the base of it, not in the chateau. This is where I was born, so she's very sweet and adorable to, to say that. In fact... No, but what I would say the difference is, it has all the characters and the aromas and the taste, but it has a little bit more um, richness. It's not as firm and focused, so it has a little bit, and that's obviously, definitely, there are little California sunshine. So I'm uh, really pushing myself to pick even earlier and earlier, because I know we can in California. I'm not a big fan, especially of Pinot 15, 16 alcohol. I, I want to get it down to that 14 or even under 14, and that's what's key, because once you bottle age it for at least two years, maybe it's a little austere at the beginning, but then it really expresses the terroir. If we let it go too long, it's nice, rich and juicy and jammy, but you're losing that really, all those interesting flavors that I think go fabulous for food. So, I'm gonna play a little trick on my lovely wife. She does that to me all the time. You know, you gotta realize, three ladies at home, five dogs, four ladies' dogs, I'm a deep minority. So, on that, I'm gonna to present to her a wine she hasn't tried in a while, and she was talking about Vougeot, she was talking about Burgundy. That's maybe a wine she may have helped to craft. Well, you just gave the hint. What is it? He was being nice. If he says that... What is it? Tell everyone! Because everyone it... needs to have all those wines in your cellar, because those are iconic, unique wines. And very importantly, this one is very special for us. This is definitely the JCB number three. If I'm wrong, it's great, and I hope I'm wrong because every winemaker needs to be, you know, have the humility. If you're wrong, what's the punishment? Um, or what we'll do I get to not as camera. a pleasure? We'll talk about that off camera. But JCB number three, I would say, and this is a, a, an interesting story from, or a wonderful story, because Jean Chau coming from Burgundy, me from California. Is that right? Edition number four. 
2015, Gina is always right, JCV number three. When I tasted some of the Burgundian wines in the California Russian River, Sonoma Coast, and in the um, San Lucia Highlands, Santa Rita, I, I started thinking, you know what? And my grandfather was a big believer in it, Hardy Burgundy, blends. I started thinking, you know what? I love to wine, I like site-specific wines, but why not have the best of Burgundy, the best of California Pinot, and create? It's like art. So I know some of the French wine writers, it was fun, we tasted this with them. You know, they would be like, oh my goodness, is that proper? Is that ostracizing? But no, they all agreed. Why not? Why not? And they really supported Jean Charles. So this is his, and we ended up doing this for our wedding. Um, I had some of the best of our Russian River, and he had the best from uh, Burgundy. And we were blending, we hand bottled it, we did the label, and it was for our guests at our wedding. So, and he had that dream too, which is interesting. But Before I was failing, and I need to tell you, this is why the contribution of each other is amazing. And Gina and all the ladies in general taste better than men. And it's a fact, you have an additional sensory, you have an additional within you sense of intuition that takes wine to the next level. This is why we have a lot of lady winemakers, this is why Gina is so amazing. And to all the ladies in wine, congratulations for being there. I was failing because I was making the mistake of going strong area with a flamboyant flavor, which was Russian River. One plus one equals just two and a half. Gina came in and said, what about if we go Côte de Nuit, so Vougeot, Chambol Musigny, Nuit Saint-Georges, Gevray Chambertin. She brought the sense of touch, the sense of elegance, the sense of finesse, and that became the results. Well, and God bless Brian Mahoney, because he's fine-tuning it even higher than I ever would. And he's a beautiful woman. Well, we all taster. work together to create wine. But Very good. Gina, personal question that you have to answer, and I know you love to avoid those questions, but what... I'm having a sip. Yes. A sip of courage. What inspires you the most? Oh, right off, the two little ones that just left. You've been inspired all your life, though, so no, 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 what inspires you the most? I think our, your our, daughters, our right? daughters inspire me to be a better mother, challenges me. Um, our winemaking team at our family winery is unbelievable. They inspire me. Um, I love working with them. They're very strong. We all work together as a great family. I would say also back to mentors. I think some of these great mentors that I have had in my life inspired me. Marcello Marcelli my greatest inspiration, alongside my grandfather and my father, inspired me. Jean-Charles, I think you inspire me a little bit, too. You think? You, so you're not sure? A little bit. No, you do. He definitely inspires me. But besides people, say, besides people, I'd like you to go deeper within the you of you, because you're very creative, you're very audacious, and I know that you love to take risks. You have a beautiful store, the Dry Creek General Store that everybody needs to go and see. Iconic. I believe it was founded like the Oakville Grocery in 1881. So you have a lot of passion, but what drives you to do all that you do? Family commitment, believing in our winery, believing that we can make serious wines. I would say a um, great mentor, which I won't say mentor, but my father, he inspired me that when I started making wine, it's okay to fail. You fail once, you fail twice. You fail three times, then there's a problem. But it's okay to fail. So I think that inspired me to really get off the track and blend different wines and be encouraged and have that confidence. So I think failure always in one wine could be a failure. Have you but ever failed? Oh, yes, I have failed. What's your biggest failure? My biggest failure? Besides marrying a Frenchman, as we understand. Oh, uh, really? I don't, don't say know. that. Don't say that. I don't think so. But what is your biggest failure in terms of what you consider failure? You're advising everybody, which I love. And this is who you are, to keep trying, and obviously it will come. And I agree with you so much that taking risk takes you to success and failure. But what did you learn the most, actually, from one of your failures, if you don't want to share it? No, definitely. Um, one of my failures was in um, making a Sauvignon Blanc, and I just figured Sauvignon Blanc should have, you know, no barrel, very um, 
Well, the stainless steel then, or the egg, or the turtle, you know, the terracotta. Yes. And it just didn't turn out right because the region was a little bit too, it was too full. But then I realized Sonoma Coast for Chardonnay, and I have a sense of Chablis, which I love. And I said, you know what, all these Chardonnays right now are super oaky, you know, overdone a little bit, but they're, they're great too with a certain dish. I said, why not Chardonnay? So that little failure there, because it yes. was the wrong area, it gave me confidence to do Sonoma Coast, very cool climate, and doing the cement egg, and doing the terracotta, and having zero oak, and actually doing very little mallow on a Chardonnay. And sure enough, was it kind of in that, I don't like to say Chablis vein, but it was very min mineral. It had that okay. beautiful... So egg. tell us, what excites you in life? What excites me in life? What excites you in life? Tell us about, not you know, your passion, that's going to be another question, but what gets you going in life? Besides your two little ones. When I cook a dinner, well, it's going to go back to them. When I cook a dinner and they're like, Mom, I love that, that excites me. Uh -huh. When I have an email or I have someone that sends me a note about one of the wines they've tasted that I've created and said, I just love that. And guess what? I loved it and I loved it with other people around the table. So what excites me is sharing, sharing okay. at the table. What excites me is um, whew, maybe going riding horses tomorrow morning if That's I can. Great. <laughs> Get out in the country. Yeah, being in nature. Right. Being in nature. I love nature. I think we're inspired by nature. I'm personally inspired by nature. I feel like right now it's been a blessing and a curse, of course, but there's too much noise in the world. So for me, nature and quietness and not that noise it inspires me. My bathtub inspires me. So what is your biggest talent? Recognize in front of us what you phenomenal at. Oh, I have no, I'm uh, no, 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 no major talent. No major talent. I have passion. I love creating. So wine. what's your passion? Um, I know she wants to go to passion rather than talent. She has a lot of talent. One to be his husband muse. She's my inspiration. So that's a big talent. It's to know how to get the other person to be inspired by your own self. And I think you're a phenomenal example as a great mother. But your talent as well, I would like to say. I would and say what it is. And it's an advice it's for right everybody here. else. She's a great listener and a phenomenal psychologist. Gina did her bachelor's degree in psychology. And I recommend for everybody to really often which is certainly a weakness of mine. Rather than talking, listening more. And I think you're a great listener. That's one of your talents. But you were going to say you were pointing at something? I was going to say, if I have any talent, it's honestly listening. <laughs> and if you're married to Tom Chavoise, you have to be a good listener and have a lot of patience. But he adds so much to my life. Why do you need I patience have... with me? I'm excited to hear. Patience? Why do you need patience with me? No, I don't need patience. So I just served. Before we talk passion, we have a few more phenomenal questions for Gina because, you know, we want to go deep into oh this gosh. fabulous body. I'm just blessed that family and friends are on there because, <laughs> say a little prayer, give me some courage. So Everybody. give us your aspiration. Asper, well, right off because I'm What do you aspire the most the, in I'm life? Off the cuff. Well, no, I w I'll use an example today that I just had and you know, um, we just had a WebEx. Our CMO for our family winery, Stephanie Gallo, who's my cousin, her call to order, which is sympathy, empathy, and flexibility. And that goes out to our whole family winery. And I, I believe that. even not during these times, we all should have more of it. So my aspiration is Especially right now, going with homeschooling with the kids, with you always being so fabulous, <laughs> and my work. Ooh, that was a full smile. No, Did I'm you see that? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm going to be tortured tonight. Can you please send me hearts? Send me hearts. Send me hearts. But I'm he, going to need he support. He doesn't, he's not calling the plumber or cooking the dinner. I'm the plumber. But no, I, I, I felt that what she had, she's been doing an amazing job during this time, um, uh, wind down, live, and. It's great energy and taking in all our different winemakers or anyone from different areas interviewing. But this was her CMO talk and it was simple. It is empathy, empathy, sympathy, 
and flexibility. Very and I think if we all have a little bit more of that, um, what a great world we're in, right? Because I know, I know personally, that's what I aspire to do. I know I need a lot more of it, especially with our little twins. Um, so Gina, not to interrupt you because I know you can go on for hours as well. Me? Or many, you? many friends like <laughs> Cecil and others, Annette, oh, God bless are you, asking about your beautiful necklace. Um, we have a story. How did I convince you to finally lend me your lips, besides touching mine, to be able to design jewelry in your honor? Because, dear friends, this is Gina's kiss. Can you please tell the story? Because, ladies and gentlemen, it took me, dear friends, over two years to get there. I don't know if it took you that long. I just, I recall, I remember I was on a work trip. I was traveling on sales. It was in New York. I finally got to bed probably about 11, 11.30, and Jean-Charles sends me a text. Send me a picture of your lips. I'm traveling in Asia, in fact. I was in Hong Kong. I need a picture of your lips. I didn't even want to ask why. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he just misses me and he wants to kiss the phone, <laughs> I hope. Which I did, too. I actually ate the phone alive. <laughs> no, he's, he's I, was I don't know about that. But he said, no, I just, I really, there's something about it. I really like the lips. I need, I, I need a picture. I said, okay, I trust you. First and foremost, crazy. And so I was so tired, boom, boom, took a picture, sent it to him. And then he creates when I, I don't know, about a year later, my lips, Cyril, sorry. <laughs> I just don't like the diamonds in my teeth because it's not me. But what I do the love- The Gina is my diamond and my ruby, <laughs> my two favorite stones, what else? Dali did the pearls, fine. You could go to Tahiti for that. But I wanted diamonds because Gina is my diamond. Well, I think it could have been something else, and I know Sarah would know it. It could have been like a nice little beautiful bug. So, <laughs> as you notice, we now have a bracelet. I do love the bracelet, and I have to say... We now have this lovely dangler. I want you to see the dangler. Here it is, and you should wear it, actually. We have the cufflinks that I'm wearing, of course, because Gina is always with me. And then I have this beautiful new Swarovski rainbow, unbelievable choker. And Gina was away for the last two weeks touring her vineyards and being out. I designed this table, which is the animalistic of me as a crocodile going up, approaching her lips. And this is now adoring a new table that we designed. And don't forget, we have a wine with Gina's lips called the Surrealist. And we have 600 bottles only, all numbered with Gina's lips. But we have a few more questions only. Gina, I want you to answer two things as we taste your beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon. Because the beauty of Gina is she understands all the great varieties. And there's probably 60 that she makes on a regular basis. Rhone Valley styles, Alsatian, Burgundy, Bordeaux. Loire Valley, you name it. She makes it all. But I wanted to summarize those three because I think the signature series for me represents not only her talent, her vibration, her radiation, and her light. So, Gina, as you describe the, na the, the Cabernet that you're making, describe it and give us what is your passion besides what we know. Hmm. Cheers. Dear friends, moment well, of would, silence. Would passion be the same thing as that would be my dream? Obviously, dreams are passion, right? Very different. <laughs> Two different questions. We will what finish we with a dream. What is your passion? Oh, and I have another one then. What is my passion? And many people want to know. I have friends who are telling me, God, she's so creative, so talented. We want to know more. My passion is... Obviously wine. I love it. I love far farming. I love gardening. I love cooking. Those are my grounded passions that I love and I think help me to aspire to be a better person, a different person. But um, with that, my passions, which really comes from my mother. She, she's done an amazing job in our community in Modesto. She loves the community. She put in the Performing Arts Center in yes. Modesto. And she always said that the community is a little flat without the arts. 
And I agree with her. I think the arts bring so much to people. So my, my passion is, it might not be the arts with that, but it's a passion of how do we still stay connected to the community? And most importantly, which my husband said I'm a decent listener, or a good listener, is I said, listening. I never said decent, I said a very good listener. Very good listener. So with that is listening to our community right here in Napa Valley, and how can I, how can our family, how can our girls learn? How can we really give back? So that to me needs to be ultimate, my passion, is going to bed at night and knowing that we made this place, that we made this area or some area a little better place. That as well, I think, um, spirituality. I, I love spirituality. I lo I'm a believer in obviously the higher power. And my passion is, because we have so much going on right now, is taking the time to really grasp that, learn more about that, because we need that. That's what keeps us centered. That's what keeps our soul focused. And quickly, you could have sent me these questions, for goodness sake. Well, I didn't want to prepare my lovely <laughs> oh my wife. God. She's much better spontaneous. But I think those, honestly, I think that would be. Well said. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. But this is amazing, Gina. And you, your family, your mother, your aunt, all the family is such an incredible support to America at large, just not California. No. But an inspiration as a great family dedicated to the art of the soil, the stewards of the land, the making of beautiful products, and you know, making people enjoying sharing them, as you said. So someone is asking about this side table. Gina and I took the print of the oak tree behind us, and we wanted to create indoor, outdoor, because the house was built by Cliff May, so we patented the profile of the inside of the tree into the table. So very, very fun. As you can see as well, we are very passionate about Cabernet Sauvignon. So Gina, you know, I've always known you Chardonnay Pinot winemaker. Tell us briefly about this wine because we have it as well at the Oakville Grocery and it's very successful. Of course, not just because you are Gina, but because the wine is great. So describe it quickly so this to is, us. Quickly. Okay. Why do you mean quickly? This was, I mean, no, no, no. I right now. No, but this was, this was a big leap of faith because I really understood Sonoma County, and we touched on it a little bit. Sonoma County is so diverse. You can do an amazing cab, Zinfandel, Pinot Noir in the Russian River, uh, Mendocino, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Sonoma Coast. So I really love the Sonoma County Cabernets. There's not many though. In the Dry Creek Valley, Alexander Valley, we create our estate from there. But when I came up with the signature series, I said, you know what, I need to leap out. I need to venture. I need to have confidence to do it. You were adventurous. So I said, why not go to Napa? Napa is known for cab. We have beautiful people like Bob Mandavi who really promoted Napa Cab, Napa cab and Napa Valley. And so at that time, we were fortunate to have some amazing sustainable vineyards in Napa Valley. So I said, okay, I'm going to move away a little bit from Sonoma County and go to Napa. With that, Cyril, if you're still watching, again, talk about Well, there was Cyril and Cecil. And Cecil. Many other friends are watching, Gina. You no, are so seducing the world. He, he, They're he, loving he it. He was really a big inspiration, and I'm still learning from him with our stagecoach vineyard with Cabernet and Napa, because I was literally a newbie. I had no clue about Cabernet and Napa. I've only been maybe, it's only been 10 years, but 10 years is not much. Um, so that, with that said, I love it because bottom line, hands down, absolutely. Napa Cab rules, it rocks, it's beautiful. This one actually is from um, our William Hill Vineyard, which I love because I'm more in the cooler climate it, or really high mountain fruit. This is Southern Napa. When you're on this particular vineyard, you actually smell the saline, you smell the salt, you can see the bay. And I believe that brings for this Cabernet, for me, yes, you have some structure, definitely, and you have the tannin, but it's mouthwatering. So it, that the saline is mouthwatering, you want to go back and have another sip. Um, so you should think, have another sip. Okay, and with that, I do a little bit of a blend with our Monterosso, which is Sonoma Valley. So again, it's only, I think, 6% of the Cab Franc. We have really lovely Cab Franc there. So it has a little bit of Sonoma in it at 6%. And I just love Cab Franc. And that's where Cyril has been an amazing mentor. Now with Stagecoach, we have beautiful Cab Franc up there. And I see this wine eventually incorporating more and more of Stagecoach and a little bit of the William Hill. So hopefully if you ever try it, I hope you enjoy it. 
Um, and many of you are commenting, yes, Gina will teach a master class. Yes, she's adorable. And yes, she's irresistible. And yes, I did not, and I promised that to you. And she will have to push me in the pool if it's not true, the questions before. And it's so much fun, more fun, even as a couple, when you ask each other's question and you have the boundaries of being all with you tonight, so we even more deep and sensitive about the answers. I have another very big question for Gina. That's the last one. Stay with us. And then I have one for you. Oh. I love it. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> so we are starting with I French Kiss, the rosé, because you start fresh and crisp, and then you go deep and rich and intense. And you go into that unforgettable moment, Gina, that you've tried ever in your life, and I remember forever, when Gina came to Burgundy, it was in 2007, and Gina and I went to the Beaujolais, to our chateau, the Pierreux, in the beautiful Brouilly area, and Gina put her lips into a gamay, a fermented gamay, ancestral method, as a sparkling wine. And you gotta realize all the French kiss, as you said, are light in alcohol, below 8%. And this is the French kiss red bubble, gamay, from the Beaujolais, which is the extended part of Burgundy. So I want to raise my glass to Gina for her fantastic, monumental personality to cope with me, of course, because I know it's not always easy, but there's You're easy. love at first sight, there's coup de food. You're easy. Thank you. I want to ask Gina the most important question. What is your dream? Dream. So that's different than my passion. You've given us your passion, sharing, enhancing the community, inspiring, being part of the land, feeding people, and your ladies, and education. I think you were very clear on that. I'd love to know your dream, and maybe you can answer by what is the dream yet to come that you haven't achieved because you're a young little child. Okay, you know, so you're a third of the way of your life on earth. Oh my God. I believe I'm going to have one more sip when he's talking. And there's so much more to achieve. So what is your dream? So when you just said what hasn't yet come, I would say definitely my dream. Honoré Josephine Grace Antoinette, growing up with confidence, finding their passion and understanding the land, sustainability, learning the community, healthy, happy lives. That is definitely my dream right now. I have a long haul to go, of course, because there are only nine. So it's gonna be a journey. But right now, that's my dream. My other dream, I'm doing my dream. I'm living my dream. I'm making wine, I'm cooking, I'm gardening. I have you. We live on Wapo Hill. I get to ride horses once in a while. Not enough. A great family, um, wonderful individuals to work with at our family winery. That's my, that, I'm living my dream. I'm really living my dream. But when you really look out, but what if, is you, your dream, if you wake up from your it's dream, those little girls. and there's something you haven't done yet. If I so will. take the girls away. Take them up. Something you, as a woman, maybe for other women, maybe as an inspiration, even further to others, I don't know. Is there something I can extract from that phenomenal breathing? creature, the sculpture of God that I have Oh my God, to stop. That is giving me something more. Last word of wisdom, maybe for our friends, that maybe you want to share or you want to send to everybody as we conclude this amazing time together. Well, my one dream, but it's a little late now, was to go to the Olympics and play soccer. I would love that. But that's not gonna happen now. Who knows? Well, Turn Gina, back time. Thank you so much for being the natural, phenomenal person that you are, for being so open-minded to everybody, for being, as I'm receiving text and text and text. How do you do it multiple? I love how you multitask. My husband's a great multitasker. I look and at those great beautiful ethics. eyes and, and I lose ethics. myself, but which was so great, Gina. Thank you for accepting 
to being on JCB Live. We have Lon with us, who is amazing. We have Patrick Egan. We have Jen, of course. We have Dylan in technology, who tonight, and it's not his fault, ladies and gentlemen, we're on Wapo Hill. The Native American Indians have been here. Realize that the historical map of Napa Valley pre-1826 was Wapo land. Wapo North, South, East, and West. This is Wapo Hill, where the chief Indian was. We have a lot of crystals, a lot of energy on that hill, and it could have interfered. So crystal may have played a role. So Dylan, no worries at all. We started again. All our friends are with us. That Lulu says... Also has patience. Definitely. It's very rare. But Gina, I want to thank you so much. Any last word for anyone as we have to say goodbye? Everybody's going to dinner or enjoying themselves and certainly continue to dream. I want to tell you you are a great inspiration to me tonight as well. And I need to confess, Gina sublimely gave me thousands of ideas. And tonight you gave me four very exciting ideas that I want to implement very soon. So maybe you can throw me a little bone in. What do you dream at night? What is your dream? Well, I don't have to dream. I'm next to you at all times. <laughs> so I feel the dream. What do we do with this boy? Love him. Love him. We want to thank Gina Gallo Boisse for her incredible contribution to being one of the leading phenomenal inspiration to the world of wine. An incredible lady, a fabulous mother, a great wife, and more importantly, a phenomenal individual. So to love, life, passion, tonight a lot of French kiss. Thanks for joining everybody. <laughs>